China is home to a breathtaking variety of orchids, boasting over 1,300 species. Incredibly, nearly half of these are endemic to its borders. This video will focus on terrestrial species found in the mid to high elevations of Sichuan province, such as this lovely mixed colony of Cypripediums and Phaeus in Huanglong National Park. Many orchids native to this region favor neutral substrates and so grow best on travertine formations, a type of limestone deposited by mineral-rich springs. Another favored habitat are scree deposits of limestone mountains and valleys. In previous videos about this region's orchids, I've focused on the genus Cypripedium, the lady slippers. Let's now turn to some of their lesser known cousins, like the showy Phaeus de la Vey. Phaeus de la Vey is a close relative of Calanthe and is found from 2400 to 3500 meters elevation. In Yunnan, a dark pink flowered form also exists. An extremely common orchid found in limestone areas up to 3600 meters is Panorchis chusua. It can form colonies numbering into the many thousands, but due to its small size, it is easily overlooked. A plant commonly confused with P. chusua is Galliaris roborowski, since they are both small in size and grow in mixed colonies. The Galliaris is most easily distinguished by its single basal leaf. This species is not typical of wetlands, but like many orchids found on travertine formations, it is often seen mere inches from water's edge. Two species of Galliaris are so closely related that they are difficult to tell apart, G. spathulata and G. diantha. The latter is said to have larger flowers and always boasts two leaves. Many consider them to be one species, with the name G. spathulata taking precedence. Another genus of small stature is Amethystigma, represented here by A. Mananthum. This lovely little plant is found in meadows and limestone-rich valleys above 3,000 meters. The purple-spotted flowers range from pure white to magenta, and as the name implies, are born singly. These white-flowered plants are growing in a mixed colony with Galliaris diantha and another common orchid, Oreo orchis nana. Oreo orchis nana is common over much of northern Sichuan, sometimes forming colonies into the thousands. While its flowers are reminiscent of Coralariza, it is in fact closely related to Calypso bulboza, as evidenced by its single basal leaf. While exploring a remote limestone valley, one tour member, Peter Maxwell, discovered an undescribed amethystigma. This amazing little beauty will soon have a name and will be added to China's vast orchid flora. Both travertine formations and limestone scree deposits eventually become thickly forested and a deep luxuriant moss community forms. While most orchids don't favor these conditions, some demand them. One common orchid of these forests is the aptly named Platanthera minutiflora. Since their roots only superficially penetrate the moss and humus layer, conditions are much more acidic than in the open forests nearby. Another relative of Calypso is Tipularia Sichuanica, here in bud. In these dense subalpine forests, Coralariza trifida is a common sight, in spite of being the only Coralariza native to Eurasia. It is also widespread in cold temperate and boreal forests of North America. The lovely leaves of the tiny Neotia puberella variety maculata adorn the forest floor. The red arrows indicate another tiny jewel orchid, Gudiara repens, growing right alongside. Until recently, the genus Neotia was split into two, Listera, a group of bifoliate photosynthetic herbs, and Neotia, leafless plants lacking significant amounts of chlorophyll, 
and thus dependent on soil fungi for nutrition. Molecular phylogenetic research suggests that the two are no longer distinct, however. Neotia acuminata is a common achlorophyllous species found over much of eastern Asia. Tour member Tom Kipfer discovered this undescribed albinistic form in a dark coniferous forest. Another common orchid of these woodlands is the far-ranging Cephalanthera longifolia, whose native distribution extends the breadth of Asia, onto Europe, and even into North Africa. Dactylorhiza veritis form of virescence inhabits cold boreal forest from eastern Asia to North America. It is locally abundant in northern Sichuan, as this extensive colony exemplifies. Below 3,000 meters, coniferous forests give way to mixed associations where deciduous trees dominate. These moist, broadleaf forests are extremely diverse and literally cling to the cliffs of deep gorges. Here we find a bewildering array of ferns, woody and herbaceous plants, and of course, orchids. Epipactus mariae is a common species of open woodlands, fields, and roadsides between 1700 and 2500 meters elevation. It is a large species, standing up to a meter or more high and boasting up to 20 flowers per stem. The large ovate leaves have a similar appearance to cypripediums and are often suffused with purple pigmentation. The smaller growing and green flowered Epipactus haliborni variety Tangutica is considered a distinct species by some authorities. These mid elevation forests are home to a number of Calanthe, including the lovely dwarf species C. alpina. Its striking mauve flowers brighten up the dark forests it inhabits, but hang down as if trying to hide their beauty. A very common species here is C. tricarinata, with its lovely bicolored flowers. Rare in Sichuan is C. arcuata, a species limited to western China. Growing alongside is another not so common plant, C. brevicornu, found from western China to the Himalayas. Both are growing in Huanglong National Park at around 1900 meters elevation. Neotia wardi boasts some of the largest flowers of the genus, yet each measures only up to 2.5 centimeters long. Another common orchid of these mid-elevations, but growing to over 3,500 meters, is Hermenium aphioglossoides. What the flowers lack in showiness, they make up in their strong, honey-like scent. The last habitat we visited were the large river gorges between 1,000 and 1,700 meters elevation. On treeless slopes, Bletala acracia clung to the rocks along with Selaginella and grasses. Its yellow flowers are an anomaly in a genus of pink-flowered plants, though some clones have pink overtones, possibly due to outcrossing with the purple-flowered B. formosana. On the very first day of the tour, we found an unusual miniature orchid growing in the scrublands of the Great Min River Valley. It was best guess ID'd as Havanaria defila, but clearly lacking the two leaves of that species, and was floristically distinct as well. This may indeed be another new species to science. Below 1,000 meters elevation, epiphytic orchids become more common. We found these clumps of Folodota unanensis fallen from the cliffs above at around 1,000 meters, the beginning of the subtropical zone. Within Wanglong National Park, an important panda reserve, there was ample evidence of domestic animals running free, including cattle, horses, and goats. This situation was mirrored in other protected areas we visited as well. While many of the plants seen in this video were in preserves, one wonders if China's remaining wild areas can continue to protect what remains of its vast biological treasures, even within the national park system.